and we are live. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 97 of Checkpoint. I'm one of your hosts, one of your hosts, Strictly Casual. Nice. I'm one of your hosts, Vincent nice. DeSantis, joined today by James Walmer. Checkpoint is brought to you by Strictly Casual, your number one show, rounding up all the hottest gaming news stories of the week and discussing all the relevant topics you need to know about. Thank you, audio listeners, for listening. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Strictly Casual. Please hit us with a rating on audio platforms. Helps us out a lot. Guys, if you didn't know, we've been doing this all 2022 so far, but uh, if you want to become a member on our YouTube channel, you can get access to the full video podcast or on audio platforms that is completely free. You can go listen where you love listening to podcasts, whether that be Apple, Spotify, Google, Pandora, wherever the hell, that's always going to be free. But if you want the full video, you can be a member on YouTube or we have free clips on there too. So whatever you're, whatever you're you know, you fancy. Okay. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, but we'll talk to you about that later. James, how are you doing this week? This week is good. This week felt like the first full swing, the whole, the first heavy swing of classes, you know, because the last two weeks we're going through syllabuses, syllabi yep. and thing like, things like that. So now we are really in it. Yeah. I'm locked into my classes. No, no looking back, no switching back. We're in this baby. Yeah. Final semester of college. You got That's this crazy. baby feels good does this feel good to be almost done it's scary yeah but it feels great yeah it is like that (laughs) it's exactly (laughs) like that i can't describe it any differently (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh what you been playing about you i I mean i'm doing fine here's the problem right now james is like i'm working right here at my desk remotely okay like literally Right. right here this is where i sit for like 80 yep. percent of my life right now um and that has been that my drive for playing games has plummeted right now yep. because i do not want it like after i work eight hours right here no way i want to pop on the playstation and just sit here to play like i'm gonna have to move my playstation nope. like out and just like into a living yep. room or something but i have been playing a lot more my switch because it feels good to just you know go somewhere else and play the switch so i've been playing a lot of celeste um I'm, I think cool. I'm really close to beating it, but it's very challenging to me because I haven't played many games like that. So um, lots of Celeste this week, and I played like a couple rounds of uh, Battlefield 2042 because I'm just curious to see how it's doing. I, it's come a long way since launch, and it's still bad. It's just still bad, and <sighs> I'm of the opinion I think it should go free to play as long as they compensate me for buying wow. the entire thing with some sort of in-game thing. Uh, I want that game to be alive. I want them to keep updating it and not abandon it. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Halo this week. Yeah. Um, I went through my weekly challenges, or not all of them, but most of them. I got all the way through the event that's going on, got the, the cyber stuff. Oh, cool. Know, I look like Hacker Man. Yeah. I got like three um, more tiers. It's, it's fun. Like, Halo is just one of those games that I can just com- always come back to and it's always fun for me. It's great. Even though there are like, I there are a lot of problems with the cosmetics and like the armor and everything going on there. But like in terms of core gameplay, I just, Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. I went 28 and like nine pop off during a game of not attrition. No way you can get that many kills in attrition, but it was some, yeah, some game. Maybe it was attrition. And it was because I remember there was a really weird, it was just, okay. There's a glitch. It's only like 12 kills max in attrition though. Right. Like twenty four. Well, there's an issue because there were bots when we first started, okay, and then people joined, so it kind of like gotcha. Re- okay. Yeah, it didn't make sense. Um, another time I was playing attrition, the it, we killed the entire enemy team, mm-hmm. but for some reason it thought the, the game thought there was one more person alive. Weird. So you're just so, there. We were just there, and then the ring came in and killed us. So we lost the round. <laughs> the other team won. We were so pissed. The other team won, but killed by storm. That, but I mean, it. They were down by one round already. So we came back and cool. won it. Again. Weird glitch, but, though. It was a weird ass glitch. James, I am so so excited for tonight at nine p.m. Or if you're watching this, it'll be last night at nine p.m. Because I'm so glad to report that Pokemon Legends Arceus is getting good reviews. It makes me so happy. Oh, baby. <laughs> Tell it's me. getting good reviews across the board. Oh. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm not seeing anything below maybe a seven. I think yeah. seven might be the lowest score I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, it seems pretty, 
positive. I mean, Polygon said it's kind of a mess, but they said it was like definitely worthwhile. Yeah, they what did they say? It, it was, was um uh, they did something along those lines. Yeah, a mess but a worthwhile adventure or a worthwhile experiment. That's what they used. Yes, that's what it was. A worthwhile experiment. Yeah. Uh which is pretty interesting to me. Uh I do I have been seeing a lot of people talk about the graphical fidelity and not that it's like needed to be the highest graphical graphical fidelity but they're kind of let down by like okay this is like really like this is really what it looks like but also there is a level in which i've seen pushback where yes maybe it doesn't need the highest graphical fidelity but there's also no reason why game freak being the size that it is should cop should cop out on right graphical fidelity yeah have the resources to make it look pretty but Mm -hmm. It's like they're choosing not to. Yeah. It's it's a look. It has a look. It has a look. It does have a look. Um, Although I really hate... Oh my God. I might rant for a hot second here. But I mean, all over Twitter, we've been I seeing this rant. stupid... Like the side-by-side comparisons of specifically Horizon yesterday of Aloy doing this grapple hook. And they're like, they're reusing animations? Like... This is what you're paying I mean, it's for. It's the same conversation stupid. around Kratos. It's a yeah, getting in the Kratos boat, getting into the boat. Yeah, it's dumb. It is stupid. It's a sequel That's to dumb. a game. It it's dumb. And I saw screenshots of Pokemon next to like a PS3 game, and they're like, "This is what you're paying for." I'm like, "Shut up! Just shut up about it." I hate it so much. I'm over it. I don't even care. It's like these people are literally here just to try to cause issues, get a little engagements on the timeline. You know what? And it's working for them but it gets me a little irked. That's all my, that's my, are you, so are you saying that criticisms of the graphical fidelity in Pokemon Arceus are not? No, based. I don't, I think some of them come from good faith. Like what you just said earlier of game freak could have done that, but it's like their choice. This is like, this is what it is. This is how it shipped. It's not that it plays bad, but it's, it's a little questionable. Like, okay, this does not, look amazing but also that's not the point they're not really they're not advertising check out this beautiful like generational game like open world like i don't know super detailed they're not saying that they're like this is a pokemon game this is open world like check this out this is what it is it's not they're not falsely advertising that they're trying to be the highest graphically i don't know highest graphical game ever it's just annoying to see people like not buy it because of that or something like that i don't know hmm. from yeah that's what i see at least yeah i think there's room for that argument just because game freak being the size that it is they've received a lot of criticism over the years yeah. just for like not putting 100 percent effort or just making really weird or not ideal decisions hmm. when they do have the resources necessary yeah too because game freak is a huge studio like Pokemon is one of the most profitable franchises in the entire world. So you would kind of expect a certain degree of polish yeah. within a game that generates such revenue mm-hmm. um, that is simply like, it sounds like to my knowledge, not there in a lot of cases. The, the revenue? And I think, no, no, no. The quality oh, yeah, because yeah. of the revenue. Got it. Yeah. And so that's what gets me. That's what, um, yeah. That's what, yeah. I got my statement was more like I tried to the broad comparison of things to older things just for the sake of arguing is what I'm not liking. I'm, no, there's no, but, there's no comparison to like prior right things within this argument. Right. I no, I know, I know. Talking about yeah. in like the discussion of Horizon and of God of War. Yeah. Right. I was just bundling that into the annoying things that I saw this week, but I understand your gotcha. your point, and I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. Um. From GameSpot, we got a couple, we got their review roundup, but basically it's it's what we've been talking about. Like, we don't even have to read these. GameSpot gave it an 80 out of 100, and Video Game 24-7 gave it 80 out of 100. There's a lot more, no, too. No, read the reviews. Some of these, the so this is from Steve Watts. Some of these new ideas in RCS have rough edges, and it's slow to start before you get access to many environments and mounts, which a lot of people talked about. This is an awkward first step, and it's a big adjustment for me, a longtime fan of the series, to make. Once Pokemon Legends Arceus finds its stride, though, it's the most daring and inventive in the series. The series has been for years, breaking apart the staid core and creating something new and exciting from its pieces. Which is, I think, the most important part about this game is that it does things new. Yeah, because, I mean, even with Sword, 
Sword and Shield. Like they're good games, but they are they're it's exactly what you would expect from a Pokemon game. You start in a little exactly. village Which, with Pokemon, you go up, right. you fight the gym leaders, and you keep going. And you level up, you grind up your Pokemon and beat the next gym. Yep. Oh, except actually Pokemon Sword, they had that uh the Galar region, which is a little different, but it wasn't yeah, important the, to me. Yeah, the Galar region, are you talking about like just the, the open areas where you can... Yeah, you hop on your bike, just, Pokemon, you know, you do your thing. Which is it's just fine, but it's just yeah. a different... All that is is a different visual representation of what the, of the classic Pokemon formula. Totally. Yeah. You know, there's nothing new there except that you can see the Pokemon that you're like catching and they chase you around or whatever and you get yeah. scared. Um, James, we're we're living in a world where we get three D Pokemon games. How how cool is that? Like, I feel like it should be expected. It should like, be, but it's think, still I, cool. I don't take it for granted. Sure, I think I take it for granted. It it's like well, I mean, like, what is there to take for granted? Like, is the three D Pokemon? Like, it's been three Pokemon's yeah. been around since GameCube. Okay, Pokemon yeah. XD Gale of Darkness, Pokemon N sixty four, Pokemon Coliseum. That's a three D Pokemon game. I know. I'm just trying They've to think. Been like, had three D Pokemon games. Why hadn't they come sooner? Through my life, I just when I think of Pokemon, I think of a two D game. That's Game Freak's fault. Uh, yeah, but I don't. I'm just so I'm just so happy to be playing Arceus tonight, dude. I'm just so stoked about it. If these reviews came out of sixes, there's no shot I would have picked it up. But I mean, there's hundreds on the board. James is frozen. James is completely fro- Oh, he's back. Just kidding. He's still frozen. Minute. There we go. Okay. You're back. You're st- Okay, we're both we're both back. Just kidding. It was my connection. He cut out again. Nope. We're good. <laughs> we're still alive. Anyways, <laughs> from Alex Donaldson from Video Games 24/7, Pokémon Legends Arceus threads the needle and somehow finds a brilliant balance between old and new, between tradition and upheaval. It's a 3D Pokemon adventure that I imagine back in the 90s that never came. It's fresh, feels new, exciting, and like a powerful new beginning for the series. Technical shortcomings and minor frustrations can't take away what this game achieves elsewhere. It's the best main series Pokemon game in a long, long time. God bless, baby. God bless. This, You know what? That statement that it's the best main series Pokemon game makes me want to buy it. And these are... These are middle of the road. Like there's, I left out some of the 10 out of 10s and 100 out of 100s because they didn't give me a compelling reason that they gave it a perfect score. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It felt like it was the same things that these th- these people said, but they gave them 80s. So I don't know. What yeah. I wonder what the Metacritic's at. Hold on. Metacritic Arceus. Uh, it is rocking a 86. Holy shoot. That's really good. That is really good. Which is really good. in comparison, Metroid Dread is at an 88. Um, other Switch games would be like Forgotten City at a 90. Yeah, cool. Unpacking 87. God bless it. Please go play Unpacking. Uh, there's another game that came out this week called a little little bundle upgrade called Uncharted Legacy of Thieves. <sighs> okay, you sighed. Tell me what. Tell me why I'm you're sighing. What's going on? Tell I'm me. tired, Vin. This is the second re-release of this damn trilogy and it's not a trilogy people sorry i don't know what the what the word is for four for a four game series no it's not it's only uncharted 4 and lost legacy are you joking my ass it is not one two and three yeah maybe that makes me even more upset it's 40 dollars. you get uncharted 4 and uncharted lost legacy in 4k you can play it in Solid 4K 30, checkered, yeah. checkered 4K 60, or 1080 120. Those are your three options while playing it. I watched some comparison videos, and I will say that it is not a huge leap forward. Like my base PS4 right, playing Uncharted 4, while it might have been in Jet Engine, I was blown away by what that game looked like on the <sighs> PS4. Um, there's a little more detail on the PS5, a little more like, di- like you can see farther and clearer. But it's not like a giant upgrade from what I've seen. But uh, also it's $10. If you have like Uncharted 4, you can pay $10 and then you get the upgrade um, or Lost Legacy. And that's for both games. So you, it's like even if you just have Lost Legacy, you pay $10 and you get access to Uncharted 4 PS5 version. And oh, that's Lost really Legacy, nice. PS4 version. That's really, really nice. Yeah. So you're saying if I have Uncharted 4 through the PlayStation Plus collection on my PlayStation 5, I can play. I can just pay $10 and get Lost Legacy. I don't know if the PlayStation Plus collection upgrades that's always that's always the question it's catch 22 um 
But anyways, uh, the gamer gives it a 4.5 out of 5, which is 9 out of 10, and says, The Legacy of Thieves collection compiles the two finest games in the Uncharted series while making them look and feel better than ever before, yet they've already pushed boundaries that are yet to be usurped, meaning existing owners of this game need to shell out for a relatively minimal upgrade without too much to offer. I still think it's more than worthwhile just to relive these adventures once again, but part of me wishes a little more effort was placed into bringing them to life for a new generation, Jade King, which seems to be a very common consensus. Mm-hmm. James Paul gives an 8 out of 10 saying there's no question then, then that you are getting a vastly superior way to play both the PlayStation 4's Uncharted entries afforded by the more powerful hardware of the new generation of consoles. The upgrades are in line with what many other games from publishers are putting out for free player for free for players. But the upgrade structure here does allow you to grab both games for a small fee even if you own only one, which is what you mentioned. Yeah. That softens the blow somewhat, but it's a factor to consider if you've already experienced both games. With Uncharted 4 faring worse than its extremely slow opening when far worse with its extremely slow opening when played through again these are yeah i agree these are still both exceptional games made better by more powerful hardware making it an easy recommendation if you miss them over the years and that comes from alessandro barbosa you know for uncharted force it is a slow it's a very slow intro for sure i didn't really think about that i guess when i yeah. play it's a lot of like oh check this out L let's relive our adventures a little bit from the first three games like look at this metal look at this I, I don't know check out my new life but i think i enjoyed it i don't know if i disliked the slow intro i didn't like it i love that game too slow. but sorry a lot of praise on the timeline for lost legacy which kind of makes me want to play it again because i forget the storyline even though i did that play is it. i have not played lost legacy it is very good i think it takes a lot of the strong parts of uncharted 4 and then gives you that in like an eight hour experience like eight to ten hour experience it's solid very cool yeah Vincent, we get three new Star Wars games. Hell yeah! NBA. We should, just we spent twenty minutes on this first segment. I'm so we gotta we gotta pick it up, baby. Because okay. we got a lot. I, is so it, no, 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 Vin. We'll just just <laughs> natural. We'll just go natural. Absolutely. Come on, we can't we can't just be rushing through this. You're right. Three new Star Wars are coming from EA. This comes from Gamespot. EA Electronic Arts has announced major plans to create more Star Wars games with its studios and partners developing three new games. These include a sequel to the hit Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, God bless, as well as God a new first-person shooter from Respawn and a strategy game from former XCOM dev devs, which I am very excited about. Respawn game director Stig Asmussen is working on the next entry in the Star Wars Jedi series following the success of Jedi Fallen Order. Another game is a first-person shooter with Peter Hirschman as its game director. The third is a strategy title from the newly established studio Bit Reactor. Respawn is producing this title with Bit Reactor handling the development. As for Bit Reactor's new Star Wars strategy game, basically nothing is known about it, but B production is being led by former XCOM and Civilization developers, including Greg Forsh. EA did not announce any new Star Wars Battlefront games. The series was headed up by Battlefield Studio DICE, which apparently pitched Battlefront 3, but the licensing costs were reportedly too high. EA no longer holds the executive license for Star Wars games on console and PC. Ubisoft is developing its own new open-world Star Wars game, while Zynga is making a free-to-play shooter called Star Wars Hunters that's on mobile. A Knights of the Old Republic remake is also in the works for PlayStation 5 and PC from Asper Media. Yeah, yeah, Asper Media. So, James, what is like your initial, like when this article came out, what are you thinking here? What are you thinking? What's going through your it head? It wasn't a surprise for me. The only yeah. surprise... For, okay, sorry. I guess I guess the shooter, the first-person shooter, was a little bit of a surprise because I was like, oh, I thought we were kind of done with those with Battlefront 2. Yeah. Um, and strategy title kind of fell out of nowhere. Um, I was kind of like, who is asking for this? Like, who is this for? Yeah. But, I mean, I guess they're just looking for new audiences. And they got former XCOM devs. And I guess who doesn't want to make a new Star Wars RPG? There's yeah. a lot of industry devs that are big Star Wars fans. I'm not surprised by that. Um, I hope the first-person shooter is, like, story-based. Mm -hmm. Respawn with Titanfall 2, even though it's not the same director as the Titanfall franchise. I'm excited for, like, what a single-player first-person shooter could look like. Do you think it's going to be single-player? I, I think, hold on. I don't think so, but I think there's a great opportunity for a single-player first-person shooter yeah. because single-player first-person shooters are kind of dead. Hmm. That's well, true. Actually, that's not true because they, they're like they're in this weird spot. I will say that because you have Doom yep. and you have uh, Titanfall. as the, Those are kind of like the two biggest 
and it's first person shooter, years single player games and that's kind of like it those are the ones that dominate the space before then if you think back to uh kill zone see playstation 2 i mean yeah kill zone also but i was thinking specifically within star wars the jedi knight uh jedi outcast and jedi knight well jedi yeah. academy was third person but jedi outcast was mostly yeah first person because it starts off as a shooter game until you get your lightsaber. lightsaber yeah what a great game that's a great game I, it's hard i get stuck so here's a couple couple things too i saw a lot of people on the timeline being like can you imagine a star wars game with apex like movement and i was like it could be wild i mean this is coming from respawn though which apex like movement is titanfall movement you know it's like mm -hmm. so right that'd be interesting i don't really you can't be like a clone and do that though you would have to be like i don't know you'd they'd have to come up with some yeah. character to do you'd that have to so. be some sort of like force sensitive yeah you know gunslinger but, could be interesting. I don't know. And another thing I was reading is there's a huge, like, uh, what is what is the word? Gap here of the multiplayer shooter this year. Because mm -hmm. Halo strived. Halo did is still striving, right? It's great. It's there. But it's doing great. on your Call of Duties and Battlefields and other, like, yearly shooters, you've had the lowest of lows. So there's, like, yes. a little void to be filled there. Um and a lot of people are talking like this could this could fill that void whatever that may be i have no idea like mm. where they would i don't know get their information that this could fill that void but um it's an interesting thought at the very least um this one more thing this is from our friend matt grover over at expert nerd podcast okay shout out matt he asked on twitter this is a great question when the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order eventually comes out, what planet would you most likely um, want to, or would you, okay, what would you most likely be able to traverse slash, like, what would you want to traverse? I think one of the most, I mean, I think we want to see the the original trilogy planets hmm. a lot. Like Yavin 4 would be sick. Yeah. Like Dagobah going through like some oh, swampy lands. Green lightsaber or, Dagobah. Or like, I think you would have to, if you, uh, I think the one planet was, I was about to say Hoth, but I think the one snow planet was a very good like mix of you got like kind of ice caves, mm. but you like, because I think if it was just like Hoth, like all snow, I think that'd be boring. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, but I don't make core. You, you brought up Coruscant. I saw that in yeah. on Twitter and I think Coruscant would be great, especially like in the lower parts of Coruscant. Dude. I and like, there's like you, you because 1313 was supposed to take place yeah in the lower depths of coruscant so it's a little bit of a nod to that i'm talking like yes it'd be cool to be in like i don't know the cool like uh jedi temples and stuff like that in coruscant but that's not really what i want i want to be like running around in this like the neon rain streets like going through a so club where like obi and freaking anakin go in uh episode two yeah, like episode two. that's I what i want that. that would be so cool be very cool um yeah i don't know could be sick i'm just thinking like on next or not current gen i guess the ability to have so much more like population density and like the lighting effects are improved and everything i just think that'd be so mm -hmm. sick that sounds very cool oh, very excited and hey jason schreier says that this game this fallen order sequel is coming this year or early next year like and it's already been yep. in development for so long so that'd be cool yeah. i mean we'll hear we're supposedly supposed to hear according to jeff grubb hear more about it like late may june may 4th baby i'm sure or d23 or something like that Fingers crossed. those would be our options yep because they ain't waiting for summer game fest if that baby's coming out this year there's no way uh next up crisis 4 got announced kind of randomly i wasn't surprised at all Super by this random. out of nowhere dude talking about the first person shooter the first person the single, single player, player shooter. yeah we really i don't know we got we nipped ourselves with that <laughs> we really did we really did this comes from polygon crisis 4 is coming developer cried tech announced on wednesday the next game in the sci-fi first person shooter franchise is in the early stages of develop development so it'll be a while uh said Anvi yearly ceo of crytech crytech released a brief teaser trailer alongside its announcement which does not feature gameplay it's it's like what you would see it's, a teaser. it's like a big group team meeting came together and they're like we're doing crisis 4 can we put a little sizzle little sizzle trailer out and make sure people know and they're still writing like you know their laptops are open they're like okay what's yeah. the story going to be uh 
the Frankfurt Germany based game developer calls the next crisis quote a truly next gen shooter and it sounds like Crytek will directly involve its player base in the direction of crisis 4 I don't really know what that oh, means yeah. Uh, Crytek is, uh, has a proud history of working with our community to develop the games you want to play, Yearly says. Crisis is an incredibly important to so many people. It's beloved by gamers everywhere, and some of those working in the industry today are doing so because of the original game. So we want to make sure the next installment in the franchise lives up to all your expectations. Join our socials and get involved. But Did you ever play a pri uh, Crisis game? I played Crisis 3 on the PS3, where you had a bow and arrow. That was cool as hell. It was pretty cool as hell. I don't remember a lot of it, though. It was like... It was there. Crisis 3 just gives you, like... They just give you hella powers. Like, they like you want super strength? Take it. You, you want, like, it. invisibility? Take it. You want super speed? You got it. Nice. Yeah. And they just, like, you're a super soldier. That's all it is. Like, you're a super soldier, and, like, some they, they put you some, like, you know, landscape, sort of, like, post-apocalyptic place. The whole thing is, like, aliens. Yeah. Or, like, alien invasion. Um... I, I don't know. When I think of Crisis cool. 3 right now, I'm thinking of like, as a kid, I'm playing this and I specifically remember a mission where you're like in the forest and there's like this stone area and you're using your bone arrow to like blow things up to kill these monsters, but you can't actually kill them if you hit them. You have to use other things to kill them. It was, I don't know, it was really hard, <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I put a little bit of time into the first Crisis. And a little bit into crisis too but nothing I, I just used it to like see how pretty it was honestly because yeah it's a benchmark game yeah which i hope that crisis 4 is as well i'm sure it will be me too yeah next up halo infinite's battle pass is including premium credits next season uh at the halo waypoint blog they released a whole update on where they're taking the battle pass next and uh, a little bit of updates so i'm just going to give a quick roundup of all those so this week uh the new update is out the weekly refresh was tuesday and that includes reduced prices across the board on the shop uh, more individual items outside of bundles that'll come next week um so the week of first week january, of february for first week of february um, big team battle matchmaking tweaks with the removal of big team battle challenges for the time being God because bless. of matchmaking issues with that. Um, and then in season two, looking ahead, they just kind of said that they're looking into bringing premium currency into the battle pass. So you'll be able to earn that currency toward either a future battle pass or items in the shop. Cool. I like that. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, my question is where are those going to fit in their current battle pass? Are they going to have to like take away some of the current things like XP boosts or consumables, or they can they just, I think they can just add them on as like a third yeah. thing in level. So instead of getting like a swap and an armor piece, you get a swap, a little bit of currency and an armor piece. Right. Yeah. Or they move the like XP boost to the free tier and they replace the XP boost with mm. 50 premium points or whatever, which is 50 cents, sure. right? If a hundred's a dollar. Right. I wonder how much they'll do because I remember in Fortnite back in the day, like 2018, if you beat beat the battle pass, you have enough currency, you have enough V bucks to buy the next season, which was awesome because I that I played so many more hours trying to get that, so I didn't have to pay the ten dollars for the next time. It's a great incentive to play more too. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and I'm just looking forward to being able to actually get stuff. I I want the stuff from the shop. To be honest, I'll be like, yeah, I'll pay for the battle pass. I want yeah. to be able to buy premium shit in the yeah. shop. Right pretty awesome uh, i i was talking cool. talking to um gabe our other our friend who mm -hmm. plays halo god bless him shout out gabe um mm -hmm. he was talking about dude if everything in the shop was like four or five bucks it'd be a dangerous game i'd just be buying everything like single Which items like five dollars like like i know week. yeah who knows <laughs> five bucks for a helmet i'll buy that yeah forget it five bucks no problem forget it come on adds up quick adds up quick chat ears for five bucks are oh, you kidding me okay that's where i do it that's that's where the credit card's in mm -hmm. guys it's valentine's day coming up real soon roses are red violets are blue don't let a wild pube wreck you valentine's day just around the corner and our sponsors <laughs> at manscape are here for you with the best tools to get your balls ready for this special occasion this v-day it's time to join the four million men worldwide who trust manscaped the leaders in below the waist grooming with our exclusive offer go to manscaped.com and use code strictly casual for 20 percent off and free shipping
The number one product in this package is the Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. And get this, the trimmer's advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate balls. It even has a 4000K LED spotlight so you can shave anywhere your heart desires. Did I mention that it's waterproof too? Get your shower on. Little shave. Get your shower I like to propose making February 13th a national holiday as National Shave Your Balls Day. Right before uh, Valentine's Day, it's perfect. Who's with me? I think this is one holiday that men and women can get behind. Guys get 20% off plus free shipping with the code strictly casual. That's all one word strictly casual at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code strictly casual. Join Coop, Cupid and shoot your arrow manscaped this Valentine's Day. Amen, baby. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring us. Quick little report. Do, 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 do. Report, That's report, 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 report. The next few Call of Duty games, including Warzone follow-up, will be coming to PlayStation. This comes from Polygon. Call of Duty's upcoming titles. Remember, we talked about this a lot last week with you know, the Microsoft Blizzard. You know, you know, if you're up on the gaming news, you, you know what we're talking about here. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Call of Duty's upcoming titles are still headed to PlayStation consoles, even though the franchise's parent company, Activision Blizzard, is being acquired by Microsoft. The 2022 and 2023 Call of Duty releases, at least, will both be available on PlayStation consoles, as well as Windows PC and Xbox, along with the new iteration of Call of Duty Warzone, reports Bloomberg. Uh, which is weird to me. The games will be released on Sony's consoles as part of an existing agreement between the company and Activision. That commitment will that commitment will remain in effect for at least the next two years, Bloomberg says, citing four people with knowledge of the deal. Uh, they also mm. Bloomberg also reports. Bloomberg's report also clarifies for now, Call of Duty's upcoming schedule is what most people are is what most people expected it to be. I am so sorry, I'm boofing this. This year's iteration is being developed by Infinity Ward, the studio behind 2019's Modern Warfare. Please, Infinity Ward, bring us back. Bring us back to those Modern Warfare 2019 days. What a time. What yeah, a great time. What a time. Which, which Call of Duty 2022 will likely be a sequel to? Who knows? But while 2023's games will be developed by Treyarch, the maker of 2020's Black Ops Cold War, which was mid. Very mid. I mean, I didn't play it. I played a lot of it, and it was mid. Okay. So, do, does this mean anything for the Activision? Yes. For the future of the Activision Microsoft deal in terms of exclusivity with PlayStation titles? What do you think? Bloomberg talked to these four people who apparently knew about the deal, who are unnamed sources, so who knows there? But they say that Call of Duty will be launching across the platforms for the next three years. After that, we don't know. They don't know either okay. about exclusivity, but we know we have three years of Call of Duty releases on other platforms. And mm -hmm. Warzone will be getting its second iteration, whether that be like... I know they call Warzone, it's called Warzone the Pacific now or something. It's Maybe it just has another subtitle and that's the new iteration, but it sounds like it's a whole new Warzone, which would make sense because how do you put three games, you have three games worth of code for weapons and stuff in a build from 2019, like the base levels from 2019 and you're yeah. just adding weapons and different movement from different games. Like I don't, that probably gets crazy. So that would totally make sense to just give it a complete refresh. Let's, let's yeah. build it back up. Um, which is actually exciting because I think Warzone was great at the beginning, and now I, I absolutely can't stand to play it. I'm, I'm sure, hmm. I'm sure. I know people still love it, but uh, a refresh would probably be good. Uh, so yeah, if you're a Call of Duty fan and you're on PlayStation, the next three years it seems like you're okay. That's it. I need to bring something up about not about Call of Duty. Bring but it up. I heard, I heard a take. Give me a take about about Activision yeah. and Microsoft. I heard. This really interesting take that Microsoft is waiting for Sony to be bought by Apple so that Microsoft would be in direct competition with some of their actual, like, I guess, actual competitors. Can, can you imagine Apple buying? <laughs> That's what I said. I said, Sony? I don't think Apple's going to buy Sony. That would be. Or buy PlayStation it... from Sony. Talk about the biggest acquisition ever 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 that's yeah. like someone buying microsoft like that's impossible yeah. they're not impossible but i i well, can't I mean, imagine about sony isn't a software company no they're not they're just hardware right. i'm trying to i'm trying to think of what i'm saying they're just hardware are they yeah. anything else I mean, besides like playstation os right they just do electronics like yeah right tvs uh, oh uh tablets phones 
Could Apple buy Sony? <laughs> this is the report that says, should Apple buy Sony? Will Apple? There's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> here. Holy crap. Yeah. Dating back to 2017, rumor swirls Apple mm -hmm. looks to acquiring Sony. Whoa. That's wild. Wow. I don't Can know. Can you imagine? It's classic. It's Microsoft versus Apple all over again. But this time, I mean, Sony has been meaning to expand to game. They want, or uh, Apple wants in on the gaming. Industry. Yeah, they do. They want the. They want that. They want that moolah, baby. And they want to bring. They want to bring Siri integration into your PlayStation. Oh God! You they can... want your PlayStation to control your home, your lights, everything is going to be run through your PlayStation. Hey, your Siri. PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> your PlayStation is now the hub to your entire house. God. You can send iMessages. It's your PlayStation <laughs> now connected with iMessage, Apple TV Plus, everything. It's I would hate play. that. Your PlayStation already gets you a six month free trial of Apple TV Plus. You have you, there's an Apple Music app on yes on PlayStation. There you go. This is I don't know. Yeah. It's gonna be crazy. Did you know? Fun it's fact. It's already got the white coloring. It does. It does match up very nicely. Here's the fun fact of the day, James. Did you know that Halo was revealed? at an apple press conference i do it's just a weird thing to me i don't know and it There's never a whole, launched on that. A whole, like alternate history video that yeah. if halo actually released on on a mac different world it's an entirely different world that is a different world we're living who knows if that world happened we might not be going through coronavirus today i think that <laughs> that the long-lasting effects of halo and apple steel <laughs> we have no idea <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. This is an exciting All right, one. moving on. Blizzard, speaking of Blizzard, announces a brand new survival game set in a new universe. Brand new AAA experience. This comes from Polygon.com. Blizzard Enter Entertainment, the home of StarCraft, World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch, is making a, quote, brand new survival game for PC and console, end quote. The developer announced Tuesday. The untitled survival game will be set in an all-new universe, unrelated to Blizzard's existing fantasy and sci-fi properties, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Blizzard's survival game was revealed in the form of a developer recruitment news item on the company's website. Here's how Blizzard described its new game. Blizzard is embarking on our next quest. We are going on a journey to a whole new universe, home to brand new survival, a new brand new survival game for PC and console. A place full of heroes we have yet to meet, stories yet to be told, and adventures yet to be lived. A vast realm of possibility waiting to be explored. The announcement is accompanied by two pieces of artwork. One just shows what appears to be an axe-wielding ranger wearing an animal skull-shaped helmet and light armor crouching in a forest. She appears to be tracking a series of colorful footprints, and a window of a window or mirror across from her appears to show a portal to another, more modern world. The other piece of artwork shows something of the inverse, a pair of teenagers in a modern city stumbling upon a fantasy world, complete with a floating castle in the distance. A title release... A title, release platforms, and release date were not specified, but the project sounds well into development, which is interesting. Shortly yeah. after the news was posted, Blizzard Entertainment head Mike Yabara said on Twitter, quote, I've played many hours of this project with the team, and I'm incredibly excited about the team's vision and the brand new world it prevents for players to immerse themselves in together. James, I'm excited. I'm excited about this. And I... I, I'm, I'm not a survival game guy, but yeah, this kind of excites me. Here's what happens to survival games for me. It's specifically, like I'm talking the last couple of years, like Valheim and stuff like that. I jump in for a couple hours and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get really into this. And then there's a certain thing that I'm like, eh, it's not worth it. I'm kind of done. And I, I don't want that to happen in this game. It probably will because that's just how I am with survival games. But the yeah. world looks pretty cool. These two screenshots, I don't really know what the storyline is here or like... Who knows I didn't how it see actually the other plays? Screenshot. I only saw the fantasy realm one. It's cool. It's like a imagine like twigs kind of going around, and then these two kids in like with backpacks and like t-shirts and stuff. They're looking in, and it's just like a huge Lord of the Rings type kingdom in the background. But behind them is like just forest. I don't know. Like they're like they're traveling to this place, but it also looks mm -hmm. like this. Uh, I don't know, Wolfman armor Avenger axe woman. guy. Yeah, a woman. a woman is going through this portal. Could there be like... She's looking at the portal or like yeah. away from the portal, but she knows it's there, I assume. Here's the interesting part to me, James. Skill Up, who we love, they tweeted this uh, 
this little tweet and said, Blizzard's secret formula has always been to take in niche genres and then smooth them out so they're ready for the mainstream. For over That's a decade true. now, the survival genre has been ripe for this sort of treatment. This could be pretty great slash huge. That's I awesome. Agree. I mean, take Hearthstone card card game. Yep. Right? That that went mainstream. That was big for like four or five years. I yeah. mean, it's, it still has a huge player base that people continue to play competitively. Yep. Um, like the before that it was magic and like magic was <clears throat> magic was like a lot more niche mm -hmm. you know even then even magic got to piggyback off of that and that got a little bit of mainstream and i mean i think overwatch it is it's like a, it's a competitive shooter but it's very like accessible accessible in a way yeah yeah i 100 um so this is super interesting i can't wait to see what the survival hope, game will actually be i hope the fact that it, I, I mean, I hope it would be more accessible because that's what kind of Blizzard does. It makes it more accessible. I hope yeah. the accessibility that Blizzard brings with this title um, fixes my gripes with survival games that kind of cater to a more hardcore audience. Yeah. And it would make sense. It would make sense if they do. If they're yes. going for that. This is also Blizzard's first new IP in six years uh, since 2016. So so it's 2016 Overwatch. is Overwatch. Yeah, this is their first new IP since then. So I'm sure they're. I'm wow. sure they've been working on this for a long time. They've got it. They've yeah, I mean, it been. says they they've been playing. It's been in, yeah. It sounds well into development. Finn, what do you think that we'll actually see some, um, some gameplay, uh, like a gameplay trailer? You know what? Hold on. First of all, we're not getting a gameplay trailer first. You know, we're it's Blizzard. It's Blizzard. We're getting that that crispy. It's gonna be clean, awesome cinematic trailer yeah. with a little bit of story in it we're not going to get a story mode but it's going to be like some sort of like yep. narrative that they're going to like allude to in a in some type of lore that we're going to want to read about later on maybe release a website with a few character bios or something like that yeah i'm gonna guess that we have some sort of quick little thing quick little cg trailer at summer games fest maybe something like that and then mm. We go into that would be a perfect opportunity. Yeah, but then it's like this is releasing or no release date. They just say coming soon. And then next year we get gameplay and it comes out at the end of the year, or something like that. Also, keep in mind that Blizzard is in the business of casting very long release schedules. So you think they in toss out release. like 2024? Like come in 2024. They could. Maybe. Maybe. But it sounds well into development, so I don't know. It does. Also, I mean, you have to keep in hours. mind that the Activision Blizzard acquisition, I don't know how that's going to either... Um, Is it coming out on PlayStation? Like, I don't know. Probably not. Well, oh, good idea. Great, great, great thought. Um, I'm also thinking, is development going to be quickened because it's merging with Microsoft? Oh, it might slow it down. Who knows? Or is it going to slow it down? I mean, you're coming off of a really rough year with all the sexual harassment stuff, so I don't know how that's yeah. impact development of the game, even though it is well into development. So Yeah. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm I'm pretty excited for this. I don't know. It could be cool. I am too. I, I can't I plan to keep a close eye on this. And you know we're gonna be reporting on it absolutely all year long. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch the whole podcast, become a member here on YouTube or listen to the whole thing for free on audio platforms. Let's move on. Well, bam. Guys, at long last, NVIDIA and AMD GPU street prices are beginning to drop, okay? Significantly, too. Uh, this is from The Verge. We're not out of the woods yet, not even close, but it looks like the prices of NVIDIA and AMD GPU prices may finally be coming down. Tom's Hardware in the US and 3dcenter.org in Germany has been charting eBay and local retail prices, uh, respectively, and they're seeing the same thing, a substantial dip for nearly every new graphics card that NVIDIA and AMD might make. Mind you, Tom's hardware also shows the volume of sales went down considerably on eBay, and some cards were barely trading to begin with. Just nine units of the Radon RX 680 or 6800 changed hands in a week. It's possible prices are coming down because some people are giving up, unwilling to pay scalper fees. Which is interesting. Well, we haven't seen any major indications that supply has caught back up to demand. These GPUs remain incredibly hard to find at anything to save uh, anything save exorbitant prices. NVIDIA and AMD have repeatedly signaling that they expect supply to improve in the second half of 2022. I know still people are uh, in these like queues for Newegg and stuff like that where they'll get an email and they're like, okay, at 2 p.m. with this code, you can, you can purchase this because we have enough stock. But people wait months for that. 
for email, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I, my neighbor, good friend, he's been in line to buy a 3080 forever on this. And he got his yeah. email yesterday. It says 3 p.m. today, you can buy it. And he did it. He got it for, at retail price. And so he's like, wow. so that's coming. He's stoked about that. Um, but he was texting me like, dude, none of my friends have gotten this email that signed up even before me. It was just totally random. So who knows? But one thing the report does not elaborate on is what exactly it means by, quote, new iteration of, wait, new iteration of Warzone? I put the wrong <laughs> thing in. Sorry. This is the end of the article. I don't know why there's a Warzone <laughs> quote at the end of NVIDIA. <laughs> yep. But that's it. This is, whole, do you think this also marks maybe uh, price drops for like consoles and for scalpers? It does. For like Series X and PlayStation 5? Uh, it does. In the article, it says that. Um, the average scalp price for a PS5 was previously $800 all year and is now $650. So that's a $150 great. drop, which is still that's great news. You're still $150 off retail, but that's a but that is 50% a drop. But that is a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Or not 50% drop, but 50% of above retail price drop. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Final one. The last big one. I was... This is, and this is a thicky. This is a thick boy. This is a thicky. Activision Blizzard to reorganize Raven QA workers amid union efforts. This comes from Polygon. Days after Raven QA, which is Quality Assurance, workers announced their intention to unionize with the Communications Workers of America. Activision notified workers Monday that it was reorganizing the department. The company announced the staff, the news to staff the day Raven QA workers returned to work after a week's long strike. Quote, in November, we began the process to convert our temporary employees to full-time employment status, Raven Stu- Software Studio head Brian Raphael said in an email to the staff. Quote, now I'm excited to share that our QA colleagues will embed directly within various teams across the studio, including animation, art, design, audio, production, and engineering, end quote. In the email, Raphael said the, quote, move to embed our QA team, end quote, has been in the works for several months. Though an embedded quality assurance model is reportedly consistent across other Activision Blizzard studios, CWA, which it, again is Communication Workers of America, yeah. organizing director Tom Smith called the move, quote, nothing more than a... T- Uh-oh. Guys, we're big frozen. We're big then, frozen. Well, sorry, he on. So, roll back like one my sentence. Kinda... It's my, it, I think it's my connection on my side, unfortunately. Okay, but there I'll we roll go. Back. Sweet, thank you. So, CWA organizing director Tom Smith called the move nothing more than a tactic to thwart raving QA workers who are exercising their right to organize. He goes on, when management uses meaningless buzzwords like alignment, synergy, and reorganization, they are sending a message to the workers saying, "We make all the decisions. We have all the power." Workers organize to have a, wor- a voice at work to rectify these power imbalances. This is why big tech mergers that could increase and further concentrate corporate power, like Microsoft proposed Activision Blizzard acquisition, deserve real oversight. This scrutiny is even more important when a company like Activision Blizzard impedes its workers from exercising rights that are protected under U.S. law. Okay. And I think I think you'd be important. Let me try to explain at a basic level what was just said. You know what I mean? So then we can easily mm-hmm. follow this end part. From what I understand, from what James and I understand and talked about this before, there is a push from Raven Quality Assurance workers to unionize, mm-hmm. right? But obviously, Raven does not really want that to happen. So their attempt- Blizzard does not want that Blizzard to does not want that to happen. In an attempt to stop a lot of these efforts, they're doing things to- benefit the quality assurance team such as putting them in direct relation with the people that they're working with instead of going through a middleman and making workflow faster and better and stuff like that and the raven qa team likes this they like this change but the person tom uh what's his name tom smith tom smith from the cwa who is the uh communication workers of america says that this is just to thwart uh, efforts of unionization and is not enough right this comes from and Tom. to be clear the communication workers of america is a union that is the that is a union that they would unionize with yeah got it cool does that make sense good move on move on yeah keep going move on cool 
I, Activision Blizzard has not responded to the Polygon's question regarding how this may impact the union, but the spokesperson offered further details about the work structure, saying, quote, it's accurate to say that Raven QA analysts will work directly within various departments, essentially side by side with those department employees on the same platforms and under departmental supervision, the spokesperson said. They'll also receive day-to-day -day assignments from these departments. There will still be a QA manager who will still be responsible for broader work assignments and overall career growth in conjunction with departmental supervision, end quote. Embedded quality assurance teams are a relatively new standard within the video games industry and Activision. In practice, it means that quality assurance workers are not partitioned off on their own, removed from the day-to-day -day practices of game development, which is a good thing. For lack of a better term, this is a quote, for lack of a better term, it really helps to humanize the QA process because they're truly part of a team, one QA tester told Polygon. They're in meetings, they're providing feedback, they're constantly talking to the devs they directly work with every day. They're not just siloed off waiting for the next thing to check, which is a good thing. So the whole this whole article boils down to um, workers wanting to unionize and to be uh, in greater conjunction with their with the actual developers. Yeah. And Blizzard said, "Okay, we'll let you, we'll let you be with the developers." They they increased pay. So in an official statement, they said, We're, "We've increased pay grade, offer benefits to significant others, um, which is among a few other things." Yeah. Which are all good things the tom smith is advocating and i think some of the qa staff would also agree that we don't know in a un right but i yeah okay it's it's tough because i mean we the only quote we have is from one qa person in here who likes the changes that raven has made but did not say anything more about still wanting to unionize or not wanting to unionize it's tough right i wish they had more quotes for more people saying like oh it's mm -hmm. not enough or this is enough or like, or what? But regardless, Tom Smith says it's not enough. It says it's not enough. But obviously he wants he wants to unionize this. Yeah. But he's also outside the company. He's with a different, he's with something else. Sure. Well, he's with Communication Workers of America. He's with yeah. the union. Right. Exactly. So interesting. I'm sure that's not the end of that story. I'm sure that gets... No, that'll yeah. definitely continue to develop. 100%. 100%. Percent, but James, it is time for our favorite time of the show. It is random fun, random stuff. fun stuff, baby. Stories without a story. Without a story. Number one, Horizon Forbidden West download size has leaked online, and it shows that it will require eighty-five point ninety-one gigabytes of free space, plus probably a day one patch, so probably more. That is pretty chunky. In addition, Horizon Forbidden West has gone gold. Yay! Uh, Today, February PS Plus games revealed. We got EA. It's a bad month, baby. What a shitty month. It's EA Sports so UFC awful. 4, which I will download, play one match of, and delete. Uh, Borderlands 2 Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, which is not actually the full game. It's actually just a one shot, and it's I, I hear it's about an hour and a half of playtime. And that was a standalone DLC that came out in 2013. Oh, is it really? Yes. Huh. Just to, is it just to hype Tiny Tina, Tiny Tina's Wonderland thing? No. I mean, I, I assume that's what it, the, the that's what the marketing reason is. Dumb. But I just don't. Dumb. Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and we get Planet Coaster, which is like roller to roller coaster tycoon. Some people are really excited about Planet Coaster, but not for me. I used to love tycoons. I just they don't do it for me anymore. It's not the same. No. But holy no. dude, do you roller. know what did do it for me? What the Jurassic Park park builders? Really? You and Ryder. You and Ryder loved that shit too. I don't know if it's just I not for me. Shit. I loved it when I was a kid. I don't think I would like it anymore. Yeah, that's fair. Same with like Clash of Clans and stuff. It's the same thing for me. It's like, yeah, I don't know. See, that's a little different because I feel like in a park builder, you like have a little more interaction with like what's going on yeah. on the base level. It's mm -hmm. not all overhead. Anyway, Elden Ring goes gold. Hell yeah. Pre-order boys. Hell yeah. I pre-ordered it. Let's oh, go. Oh shit, you're... And on my screen, you're over here, so I went for the high five there. I know, I had to look at the camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> and IO Interactive announces free upgrades for Steam owners of Hitman 3 Standard Edition, Deluxe Edition, or Trilogy. And Retro Studios is still hiring for Metroid Prime 4. I didn't mean to skip that one. Might be. That's okay. Epic. Stories of the story, random fun stuff is complete, baby. That's episode 97. James, what are we going to do, dude? We have two more episodes till episode 100. 
That's Ooh, just so no. crazy to me. That is so crazy to me. What are we gonna do? <sighs> Let us know. Let us know if you want anything special. I'm. Re I want to do something special, dude. 100 episodes is no joke. That's a huge portion of our lives, James. Yeah. Is he that's a hundred hours. That's just the recording side. Imagine the show right. prep, posting, like it's things throughout the 200 week. Two hundred hours. Easily. Two hundred. Easily. Yeah. That's just a lot. But, God, we love it. So yeah, let us God. know. Let us know if you want us to do anything for episode hundred because we're trying to think of something. But we'll, you know, we'll get there. Oh my God, right. that also reminds me. Of, we have three days to switch podcast platforms, guys. If you are listening to this podcast and all of a sudden tomorrow you are not able to listen to it, it might be down for like a week. But we'll, we will have it on YouTube, um, and stuff like that. So, uh, but we'll get those back up as soon as possible. But bear with us through technical issues because I need my money back. I got ripped off. I got ripped off. Yep. And we gotta, yep. we gotta fix this. Okay, that's how it goes. Yep. Guys, love y'all. James, any final words? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to, if you want to support us, you can be a member for two dollars a month. Yep. And uh, do all the things. All the things. Have a great day. All right, guys. Peace out.